Good morning, hey everybody. My makeup towel out the way. How y'all doing today? Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I will and I shall rejoice and be glad in it. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Hey, Tracy, how you doing, sweetie? Um, so good morning. My name is Rashida Monique. I'm here Monday through Friday with the Daily Show broadcast between the 7 a.m. 7.30 hour Eastern Standard Time. Thank you for copying on. Thank you for sharing and inviting and all those wonderful things. If you're watching the replay, hopefully you stay till the end. Let's get into this really uh quickly today today is our intervention day on wednesdays we talk about intervention intervention is the act of coming between um a certain action and a result um trying to stop a certain result change the result and all that those things so we talk about how to intervene on our behalf and today's topic is to keep a record to keep a record you don't know as our coach well <laughs> drilled into us last night what you don't track, you don't know. What you don't track, you don't change. And um, it is so true. And I've been learning that over the years. And I've been even in this space of spiritual development um, and teaching Bible study. You know, you ask people, well, where is it that you can do better in your spiritual walk? Oh, I need to pray more, fast more, read the word more. I need to pray more, fast more, read the word more. I'm like, okay, so what's more? Like, how much are you doing it now? And what does more look like? Um, when are you going to fast? When are you going to pray? You know, until you make those decisions, you're always going to have the same answer. Um, you might say, well, you know, I pray a lot for myself, but I want to start praying for other people. Or I pray for like my uh, church family, but I need to start praying for the world. Or I pray for the government, but maybe I need to pray for, uh, the drug addict or those that are sick or something like that. You know, it becomes more specific once you start measuring it. And so keep a record. Once on it came to mind, which I'm not going to on scene today because I don't even can't remember all the words right now but Bishop Patterson was saying oh my record will be there through uh life's pages dark or fair like all the work that then will be done is going to be recorded right and so if God keeps a record we should keep a record right so we won't go back go um around the same pages I feel like I put on extra moisturizer this morning y'all that makeup gonna look good when I put it on oh um, <laughs> But um, God keeps a record. He keeps a record, and so should we. So I've got three scriptures for you today. I got three scriptures for you today. I know I don't always have three. Sometimes I don't even give you one. But let's go to Romans 15 and 4. And because I looked them up on my phone, I got to find them in the Bible because I'm using my phone. So good morning. Hey, apples. Good morning. <laughs> Excuse me. Hey, Laura. Romans 15 and 4 reads, For whatsoever things were written aforetime, which was before our time, our history, were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Right? Might have hope. And that's funny because that's not the scripture I wanted. The And scriptures are written are uh, the inspiration of God. Where is that scripture? Anyway, we're not even going to go there, y'all. And forgive me for the lack of preparation. But it was it was written that it might give us hope, right? There's another scripture that says it was written for our learning and our reproof. It's for us to uh, be edified and to be able to have a measuring stick, Right? That, okay, if this was this is what God dislikes, then I know not to even go down this road. If this brings God's glory, let me go down this road. It was written for us to learn from. But if we don't keep a record, if we don't uh, 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 look at the record, it's sort of like having a checkbook. If you can use a check, you can write as many checks as you want. But if you don't put checks in the register, I know people don't use check, checkbooks anymore. But uh, well, some people do. Um, you don't put the, put the numbers in the register and you don't keep a balance, you still going to overdraw that account. You can keep writing checks, but your money going to run out. And if you don't know what's in there, you end up overdraft and paying fees, right? You need to know what's in that record. Habakkuk 2. Habakkuk 2. And I'm going to tell y'all, I'm going to tell you uh, um, a trick to saying the names of, of the stuff in the Bible. Most people say I'm different. 
And I don't know about y'all. I ain't about to debate with people how to pronounce the word, but I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to pronounce it with confidence. <laughs> and we're going to keep on rolling. You understand? How did I just see Habakkuk? And then now uh, I can't find uh, um, Here we go. It's small. Habakkuk 2. It says, uh... The Lord answered me, two and two, the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon the tables that he that meet, that read, that he may run that reads it. Let me say that again. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon the tables that he may run that reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie, though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. That verses two and three. Um... That uh, vision is not just you being able to see in the future or have a dream or make a plan, but it's also, okay, I have this plan. What have I done, right? And what has worked and what has not? But you need to keep a record, especially when it comes to uh, what God has done in your life. You know, sometimes uh, we used to sing a song, um, um, Jesus, I'll never forget. Y'all know that song, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. Oh, you've done so much. Y'all know that song. So, <clears throat> but if we don't keep a record, <clears throat> we will forget. We will, you know, because now we have another thing on our mind. Lord, I need you to move this way. I need you to move that way. But we forget. We forgot, as they say, when we pray for the thing of for where we at now, where we pray for peace and we're at peace now, where we prayed for a raise and a job or being able to live on our own without any assistance, we prayed for that. And this is where we are now. We forgot when we prayed for that. So we need to keep a record and look back over our life and see where God has brought us from. That's why the Bible says that we are overcome by the blood of the lamb and the words of our testimony. Because if we continue to tell people of where God has brought us from, if we continue to reminisce on what God has done in our lives, it would give us hope. It would give us a uh, 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 build our faith. It would do all those things that in the times where you are low, you know, now they have uh, the gratitude jars and the different things. What I was thankful for, what happened this day that I was thankful. So when you have a day that you feel low, you can go back to the jar and pull out all those things. You know, there are so many things out of the Bible that people are using. But if you keep a record, like the word says you keep a record, you will know. Let me also tell you why you should keep a record because God keeps a record. And I know we talk about the Lamb's Book of Life. We talk about the Lamb's Book of Life a lot and how we're going to be judged by the deeds of our body. But I want you to go here to Revelations 8. And don't be scared. Just go to Revelations 8. Um, I was talking to somebody. I thought all saints read Revelations. And some people say, like, no, everybody don't say the Revelations. People don't say the Revelations. I was like, they don't. I ain't know. I was the weirdo. Whenever I felt like I was low, I go to Revelations. Because once I read Revelations, I'd be like, oh, things ain't so bad. <laughs> things ain't so bad, okay? Revelations 8. Let's go through 1 through 4. <laughs> right, Gina? Revelations 8, 1 through 4. And when he had opened up the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of a half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. God is keeping a record of your prayers. If that ain't a reason to pray, hey, Valley, if that ain't a reason to pray, come on, that God is keeping a record of your prayers. He loves the prayers of the saints, that he's going to have them bottle up. And even when that time comes, that they're going to be offering up with the incense before God, right? It is like a great offering and so we should keep record of our prayers you know uh, you know lord i'm praying for you know we talk about prayer journals we have fancy words for them now right 
prayer journals uh, and different things and writing when God answered a prayer, writing what our prayer requests are, writing the things on our heart. All of our prayers are precious to God that he keeps them, right, bottled up until that time in a censer that the angels will offer them up before God because they bring God glory. They bring God honor. So before you quit right? Pursuing a consistent prayer life before you quit trying to grow, before you quit on this uh, path of being spiritually whole or well or consistent in growth or whatever area that you're working on in your walk, before you turn around, go back and look at your record. Remember when you didn't even have the mind to pray. Remember when your first thought was to grab a drink before you came to God. Remember when you were outside of fellowship and you thought you were all alone because you had turned your back on him. Remember when you thought that you could never be forgiven, but yet he forgave you. When you never thought that you was worthy of anything, but he said you didn't have to be worthy. I'm your father and I'm going to give it to you. When you keep a record of where you were, not to uh, to boast in our past sins or our past lives or not to bring glory to ourselves or even to beat ourselves up of where we were, but to give God glory and to remember the God that we serve. So we won't find ourselves back in those very low places, believing the lie of the enemy, right? What is the lie of the enemy? Anything that's outside the word of God. If the devil's speaking, he lying, okay? If the sucker opened his mouth, he lying. I know it sounds like the truth, but he lying. He didn't add it. He didn't change. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't, uh, didn't took a word out here, added a word out there. He didn't put in different connotation, different context. But if, he te- if he's speaking, he lying, okay? Y'all know people like that. Y'all know people like that. Y'all got family members like that. So-and-so said this. I she said that. I don't even believe it because if she talking, she lying. Hey, Dana. Right? Keep a record. Keep a record. Write down where God has brought you from. Write down most prayers that were answered. Write down the things you've learned. Keep a record. Take sermon notes. Take prayer notes. I remember uh, in one of the Basque sessions that uh, Charlotte Showers did in Troy, Michigan, we went one morning. And uh, we were just going in, going in, and going in. You know, people just going in prayer. And, you know, people was praising the Lord and all kind of stuff. And then I, I was, I prayed. And I was enjoying just listening to the prayers of the saints. And I grabbed my Bible and grabbed my book and got the writing. Right. Because I need to keep a record of what God put in my heart and my mind. You ain't going to remember everything God dropped in your spirit in a Sunday service. That's why you don't need to go to church with just your uh, cell phone. You need a book. Because your cell phone will die. And they won't be able to transfer none of your stuff or whatever. But you need to be able to keep a record of the things God dropped in your spirit. Keep a record of what God told he, you he was going to do for you. That's the things that you pray over. That's the things that you study out. Those are the words that you uh study out in the word of God. When people say, like, I don't know where to study. I know there's a lot of books. I don't even know where to start. I say start anywhere. Okay, for God so love the word. John 3, 16, John 3, 16. Just start there. But just start. And then the things that God placed on your heart, write it down. And the reason I said keep a record, I'm going to tell you what happened yesterday. So yesterday I was going through Facebook memories. Yep, yesterday was October 27th, 2020. So I went through Facebook memories and I was scrolling and I was like, oh, I didn't have a broadcast for 2019, y'all. I didn't have a broadcast for 2018, but I had two broadcasts for 2017 and 2016. 2017 broadcast from uh, the Daily Devotional. Y'all remember when I did the Daily Devotional? brought me so much life it was a friday a free praise friday y'all know how we celebrate god on friday right it was free praise friday i from what i was saying it it was a different type of morning i was thinking about not doing the broadcast but i decided to come on and do it anyway right i was inspired i watched a couple of broadcast people that i followed then on a regular basis and i hopped on and did the broadcast and started praising god and just listening to myself give god glory it it brought back memories right october 2017 was four months after my godmother had passed it was uh four months after so many other things and uh i want to say november if it wasn't november 2017 or 2018 you know my twin uncles passed within 48 hours of each other and we lost several church mothers and it was just like crazy right 
but I begin to hear myself give God praise. <laughs> For 15 whole minutes, Tracy. For 15 whole minutes. And it blessed my soul. I said, Lord, I thank you for this record of this. I thank God for that record, right? If I hadn't have been in Facebook memories, I would have not come across it. And I was like, I need to get back on here. I had to start the process of getting my videos off of Facebook, right? And putting them on my YouTube channel so I could have them. And so as we, um, hey, Jack, you're welcome, Gina. So as we uh, go through life, we need a reminder of whose we are and who God is right? What he has created us to be. That's why the word of God is so important. That's important. That's why um, our flesh and, and the enemy tries to deter us from um, being in the word of God because it reminds us of the authority and the power God has given us, the authority over the enemy, the authority over sickness, the authority over disease, right? That we have the authority to cast out demons. We have the authority to speak to mountains and they will be moved, right? Not because we have power, not because we are perfect, not because, notice I said authority as opposed to power. I don't have power, but because Jesus Christ has all power, Right? Because he has all power. He has given me authority to use his power. So when I speak to the demon, when I speak to the devil, when I speak to circumstances, when I speak to myself, that has to move because of the name of Jesus. And so a lot of times we don't walk in this authority because we have already made this to be like, you have to earn this power. Ain't nothing you can do to earn this power. Ain't nothing you can do to earn this. It was given as a gift to us because we are his children, right? Most good parents, because I came across some parents over my lifetime. Good parents, you got a house. You don't make your children earn a place to live. They live where you live. If you live in an apartment, they're going to live with you. If you live in a house, they're going to live with you. If you end up living in your car, they're going to live with you because they're your child. You, they're going to have access to everything you have access to. But if you don't know this, if you don't study the word for yourself, you won't know this. And so then you begin to believe that every person that says that they're of God, every person that has a title, every person that has a church, you can leave every word that come out of their mouth, but every word that comes out of their mouth is a Bible, right? Some of that is culture and the other is preference, right? And so it's not always harmful, but then you have to see other people's preference, right? Some people prefer raw vegetables. Some prefer them cooked. It's a preference. Either way, they're good, right? But some people, you they'll take the pastor's preference, as Bible. And then 40 years out of the world, you find out he went Bible, you say he manipulates you. No, but your work, your job, I'm telling y'all not, your job is to study every word that you hear from whoever. If you hear from me, don't say, ooh, well, she have said it. It must be true. I trust her. She done, nope. You better go to the word, study it out for yourself. You better use Google. I'm like, what scripture was that? Find the scripture, go study it out for yourself. Because my interpretation of it, where that word hits me at that moment is, uh, Something it's something about the word of God, right? It is alive. And so I can read a scripture, John 3, 16. And if I'm going through something, that uh, scripture can speak to that issue, right? It'll speak to that issue on that day. But 20 years down the road, I might read John 3, 16 and be going through a different issue or have another part of my spirit that the Lord is speaking to in that same scripture. And then I'll be teaching that scripture in a different way. And so it is good for us to study for ourselves. So when we study the word, we can apply it to our personal issues and our personal uh, places that God is trying to heal and to deliver and to set us free in. But until we do that, we're going to always struggle with what is the truth? Who's lying? Who's not? But if you go to the word for yourself, you'll be able to sing that song. That bishop always saying that the Bible is right. Oh, but somebody wrong, right? <laughs> I ain't got to believe all y'all. I don't care what the title is. Prophetess, evangelist, uh, grand poomba of the church of whatever. Once you say it, I'm like, oh, okay, well, let me grab my trusty Bible and my dictionary. And I'm going to take this to the Lord and we're going to see 
what he's saying. I'm just saying. That's why the record is here. That's why he wrote the scripture. So we can go back and study them out. So we can keep our word. Keep his word in our hearts. What did the psalmist say? Um, Thy word have I hidden in my heart. I, I keep it close to my heart. I keep it on the inside. That I may not, might not sin against you. A lot of reasons that we struggle in our flesh. Is because we're lacking in our prayer life and we're lacking in the word. Because we thought that we could handle the lust of our flesh in our own power. We thought we was going to make ourselves stop fornicating. We thought we was going to make ourselves stop cussing. We thought we was going to stop ourselves from doing drugs. We thought we was going to stop ourselves from being violent and being angry and being uh, uh, downtrodden and walking in generational curses. But you can't do it. You need prayer. You need the word of God. And then you need a fasting life because the Bible says uh, some things, these things, these things only come out but by prayer and by fasting. That's in the New Testament when he cast a demon out of the young man. These things only come out but by prayer and by fasting. You have to kill your flesh and feed your spirit. And when you keep a record, you will notice the difference. And when you don't do those things and when you do, you'll be able to see where you, the improvements in your spiritual walk is and when they're not. Keep a record so you know which ways to go. If you go the wrong way, y'all, they close off after to roll, right? They close off after to roll. But it was west of the expressway. So one day I was driving west. I was east, coming from east. So I was coming west on Atherton. I mean, west on Atherton is Grand, it's, uh, Grand Travis. It, Grand Travis is closed. So I was like, oh, it's west of the expressway. So I can go up here and hop on 475 right quick. No, you can't. You wonder why? Because they changed it. They finished the one side and now they're east of the expressway. And so they blocked off the way I was trying to go. Right. And I was like, oh, okay. So now I got to turn around. The next time I was on Anthony to Row, you know I didn't try to go that way. Why? Because I had a record. I had a record. I can't go that way no more. That's what the record does. That's how it intervenes. I can't do that no more. Um, Record. How I hurt my shoulder. My shoulder was already strained. And then I tried to do a, a plank, y'all. I hate planks. But I was like, I'm just going to bust this plank out. It's in the workout. I'm going to bust this plank out. Y'all, <laughs> y'all, that this shoulder went through it from that first injury and that plank. And then when I talked to a physical therapist, he said, well, you know if your form isn't right, if you're not really engaging your core and holding your back up with your core, he said, all that weight is sagging on your shoulders. And he said, and that, he said, people usually mess up their shoulders with planks or when they do the plank up. So you start off on a plank and then you, I think it's a yoga move. Put you lower your back and come up, and he said a lot of people tweak their shoulder doing that because of lack of form. Listen, I got a good record. I got a good record. I got a good medical record, and that physical therapy record, and that bill. You understand? You ain't got to worry about me and no plank no more. Listen, I know what I'm working with, and you ain't gonna get me on the floor doing the plank no more. Any kind of ab. Ab exercises, I will do standing because my legs can support my body, but I will not and shall not be doing that again because I kept a record. Hey, mama, good morning. I say good morning to my mom on Instagram. <clears throat> so, um, keep a record. Why? Because God keeps a record. We have the word of God, which is a record. He told us in Habakkuk 2 and 2 to keep a record. He told us in Revelation that he's he's keeping a record of our prayers and they're going to be offered up with the incense and the end times before God. Come on, that our record will be there. And if God keeps a record and we're made in his likeness and his image, we are to keep a record also so that we know and be able to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God because we have studied his word and we have aligned ourselves to his word. Thank you, Gigi. Be aligned up with his word. The Lord, we praise and we thank you for this word on today. God, that we are to keep a record of your goodness. You said in your word, God, that you keep a record of all that goes on in this earth, oh God, and we are to do the same thing. God, you said in your word that you are holding the prayers of the saints, that they are saved up, God, because they are precious to you. And we thank you for our prayers being precious to you. God, we thank you for how you continue 
to lead and guide us in all truth and all your ways. And we appreciate you, oh God, for being patient with us. For when we don't keep a record, when we forget how good you've been, when we forget how great you have been, how you've heard and answered our prayer, God, when we forget that you are still there with us, Lord, we ask you to forgive us. And God, give us a hunger and thirst for your word, for uh, fellowship with you, that we will keep a record of what's going on in the earth, that we keep a record of the word that you send to us. Oh God, every prophecy, God, every uh, word of revelation, everything that you give us, oh God, Lord, that we will keep a record and have a library, have a place where we store the word that you have spoken over our lives, words of healing and words of deliverance, words of hope, words of strength, words of encouragement. Lord, the word that you have sent through the preachers and the teachers, oh God, help us to keep track of those words and continue to study them and compare them to your word to make sure that we are in your will and in your way. God, we ask you to lead and guide us in all truths. God, we ask you to open up our mind and our understanding, open up our heart, that we will um, have good ground of the heart that when these seeds come out of your word that they will be planted on good ground that the enemy will not come and snatch them out but God cover them and uh, protect them from the enemy and send one to water them and God you give the increase as you stated in your word <clears throat> and so God we thank you for the word that you sent today to hide in our heart that, that we will walk therein and we appreciate you on today Lord, we ask you to touch those that are watching. We ask you to heal the sick among us, oh God. Lord, send out your healing virtue in the name of Jesus. God, we ask you to heal from autoimmune diseases. God, call, heal from COVID. God, heal from pneumonia. Heal from asthma. Heal from lack of oxygen. God, heal lungs on today. Expel fluids, oh God. Cause those capillary um, uh, tentacles to... Uh, Bring oxygen into the uh, lungs in the name of Jesus. Call those lungs to operate as they should in the name of Jesus. Call the esophagus to work as it should. God, cause our skin to process oxygen as it should. God, we find the spirit of sickness and affirmity among these on today in the name of Jesus. Because why? He was he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. And the chastisement of our peace was upon Jesus Christ and with his stripes. We are healed. God, so we ask you to manifest healing in the bodies of your people. Manifest healing in Tracy. Manifest healing in Valley. Manifest healing in Mama. Manifest healing in Gina on today. Oh, God, manifest healing in all those that are hearing this prayer. Oh, God, wherever it finds them. God, we believe that your spirit reached places that we cannot reach. Your spirit can go where we cannot go. Yeah, your spirit can transcend um, technical technology and transcend the distance and transcend a pandemic, God, and can go places where man cannot. And you are the great physician. You are the great I am. You are the God that heals your people. You are the wonderful counselor and the prince of peace. And we need your healing in this season. In the name of Jesus, we bind sinus infections and respiratory infections. We bind hair and colds. We bind the flu. We bind COVID-19 and the coronavirus. In the name of Jesus, everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of you we bind it in the name of jesus under the authority of the holy ghost god that you are covering our houses you're covering our jobs god you're covering our properties you're covering us as we go to and fro with your hedge of protection god we plead the blood of jesus over our lives cover us in your blood oh god your blood protects us like it protected the children of israel during the plagues god cover us with your blood cover every doorpost and every window god bind the spirit of violence in our cities the spirit of violence Violence in the land in the name of Jesus. God, we bind the spirit of injustice. We bind the spirit of hatred. We bind the spirit of division, oh God. We bind the spirit of division and hatred in the body in the name of Jesus. And God, we glorify you on today. We honor you on today. God, we ask you to give us a right mind. A mind to love our neighbor as ourselves. A mind to love those that we see every day. God, give us a heart to love your people. And God, we glorify you on today. Hallelujah. We magnify you on today and we give you praise, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Cover the homeless and we buy bullying in the name of Jesus. Amen, Gina. In the name of Jesus. Yes. 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 
So good morning. Thank you all for being here. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully something was said to bless your soul on today. Hopefully you had a great understanding. You go out and study this word for yourself. You don't have to take my word for it. Y'all don't know me like that, right? <laughs> well, mama does. <laughs> Valley know me. But listen, y'all say the word for yourself. Get understanding for yourself, right? Get an understanding for yourself. Keep a record. So I thank you all for watching. Thank you all for being here. I appreciate you for being here. Hopefully you can join me tomorrow between the 7 a.m. and the 7.30 hour Eastern Standard Time. I do want you to know that you are blessed. You are highly favored. You are the apple of your father's eye. He is absolutely and positively concerned about you. He thinks that you are the best thing since sliced bread to him. Yes, you can cast all your cares upon him and know that God cares for you and that he loves you with an everlasting love. I also want to know that if you missed any other broadcast, you can go to YouTube and find me at Rashida Monique, or you can go to the page, the uh, blog page that I'm working on, y'all. I'm working on it, RashidaMonique.com, to find your replays, maybe with a little added um, commentary, written commentary. But go on over there. Um, if you miss them or you can't find them on Instagram or Facebook, you ain't got to go all that scrolling. Just type in Rashida Monique. You'll find me on these internet streets. All right. You all have a wonderful and a blessed day. Lord willing and the creek don't rise. I'll be back here tomorrow.